Hey peoples and welcome to Frozen Gaming. Um, I've got a slightly different video here for you guys today. It's uh, going to be a three-part series of Hiroshi Yamauchi. And for people who aren't aware who he is, he is the former president of Nintendo who passed away earlier this month. Um, I felt that I was only right to do a video about him sort of thing because to try it's mainly to try and help people be more aware of what he actually did for the gaming industry and you know things that we may not have had if it wasn't for this man um, so I'm just going to briefly explain the three parts of the videos the first part is a pretty much a brief history of Nintendo and the second part is about console wars that started with like the NES or with Nintendo and Sega continuing on up to this generation and the third part is just going to be a conclusion just um, telling you guys what we have because of this guy because of the choices that he made and what would have possibly happened had he not done what he did um, so yeah I'm just also going to explain that I do actually go into a brief history of it. I don't go into everything about it. Like I, don't, I, I, I just mainly read the parts that are crucial to get my point through. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. And here we go with the first part. Hiroshi Yamauchi, former president of Nintendo, passed away on the 19th of September at the age of 85 after losing his battle with pneumonia. This was a huge loss not only to loved ones and friends that knew him, but also the gaming community. Many people when they think Nintendo, think about Mario, Link and Shigeru Miyamoto, and not necessarily Hiroshi Yamauchi. Hiroshi was the president of Nintendo from 1949 to 2002, spanning a presidential career of, at Nintendo of 53 years. To many of you, this may come as a surprise, thinking that the NES only came out in the 80s and that being the initial beginning of Nintendo. But Nintendo has been around since 1889, where they handcrafted playing cards. When Hiroshi took over at the young age of 22 from Fus Fusajiro, Yamauchi, his grandfather, after being supposedly the last direct relative who was able to be found. He took the job on one condition that he be the only relative that works there. His grandfather reluctantly agreed before shortly passing away due to a stroke, and as a result, Hiroshi's cousin was fired. He wasn't taken seriously by the employees due to his age, his lack of knowledge for the business and his experience. The employees, thinking that he was a pushover, went on strike, found out the hard way that he would not be intimidated by them by firing many of the staff members, some of them long-time employees at Nintendo. Hiroshi changed the direction of Nintendo by first pl making playing cards that appealed to the Western market, and then making a toy uh, moving on to become a toy manufacturer. But due to the toy industry being in a saturated market in Japan with the likes of Bandai and Tommy, Nintendo struggled to compete and were in a lot of financial trouble when they finally saw some success as an electronic toy company, bringing in devices still well known to this day, the Game & Watch. In 1977, Hiroshi hired a man that would in time become a gaming industry god. That man is Shigeru Miyamoto. Through a mutual friend, Shigeru's father organized for Shigeru to have an interview with Hiroshi. And even though with a lack of experience in the electronic toy industry, hired Miyamoto as an apprentice on a whim because of ideas he had for the business. Unknown to Hiroshi, that he had just made a decision that would change the gaming industry completely and boost the company to heights I doubt he could even fathom at the time. In the 70s and 80s, arcade machines were all the rage, with a classic like Pac-Man gobbling up kids' pocket money like Skittles. Nintendo also branched out to the arcade machine market, making games such as Sheriff, Radar Scope, and a hugely successful hit, Donkey Kong. 
Through the success of arcades, a new market developed, the home gaming console. Home gaming had a mass appeal to the mass market of youngsters. The idea of being able to play your, fam or your favorite arcade games in the comfort of your own home and not have to keep loading the machine with quarters had not only kids but companies foaming at the mouth. Companies quickly tried to capitalize on the home gaming market, constantly pushing new consoles out, but only a couple stuck. The biggest mover and shaker at the time was the Atari, or was Atari with the, their console, the 2600, with promises of bringing the experience of arcade machines to your living room, something no console had quite achieved at that point of time, and Atari definitely did not achieve with the 2600, although they had a lot of success. The main issue with the Atari is anyone could publish games, there was no quality control. Atari didn't care much for filtering the good from the bad and releasing only the good due to their initial success. They seriously thought they could do no, uh, do no wrong. But with the lack of quality control and the fact that any Tom, Dick or Harry programming games for the console constantly flooding the market with many subpar games with it being very improbable that you would find a gem. This eventually spelt the demise of Atari, with them drifting out of the console wars and almost completely killing the home gaming industry. Enter Nintendo in their home console entrant, the Famicom, or as it's known to the rest of the world as the NES or Nintendo Entertainment System. With its amazing graphics and sound it, for its time, it was the closest gaming console to achieving arcade machine graphics. With the introduction of Nintendo's seal of approval, a strict and stringent system implemented by Hiroshi Yamaguchi, to, mm, the flood of inferior games declined greatly by making it that games had to be approved at pretty much every stage of development, from concept to completion. A select few gaming publishers were given permission to make games for Nintendo and with all the strict quality control the ratio of terrible games to good ones was flipped, injecting some much needed life into the home gaming industry. With Nintendo bringing in strong infrastructure to the gaming industry, it wasn't long until they received some healthy competition. Hey guys, thanks for watching the first part of my three-part series for Hi Hiroshi Yamauchi. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button and let me know because it really helps out and um, also leave any comments down below about details I may have got wrong or left out that you think are crucial to this story. I've got, I've got no problem with people debating about what I've done wrong or stuff like that. It's all good. Um, you can also follow me on my Twitter my Twitter page and Google+, Facebook, the description. It's Blair. The links are down in the description, <laughs> and if you guys want to see the the next two parts, make sure you subscribe, so you can get access to them straight away. Um, so, until I see you again, stay frosty. Beware the false shepherd. The false shepherd seeks only to lead a lamb to... Who is the false shepherd? Is it him? Is it him? Or him? Is it you?